You know what I think about us, the three of us, what we could be. I think about it all the time. Please, it's terrible. No, it's not. I know June, she's my friend. I care about her. How's your day going? You look pretty. Thanks. I wore it just for you. Her father's a driver named Nick. He helped me to survive. Yes, you can, because I can't lose you. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. What about you? Your girlfriend is a badass. Welcome to Above the Garage, a Nick and June, The Handmaid's Tale podcast. Hi, friends. Today we are going to do a deep dive into season one, episode three, which is called Late. It is going to be full of spoilers. If you're a new watcher to the show, go look for our spoiler-free analysis, which came out on Monday. This is intended for longtime fans of the show, and we'll be discussing this episode in the context of future episodes and the show to date, foreshadowing, parallels, stuff like that. So let's do our round of introductions. I'm Scarlett. Hi, I'm Claudia. I'm Sarah. I'm Tina. I'm Kimberly. And I'm Kate. So what do you guys have for spoiler full? So I had, there's a quote at the beginning. It's a voiceover from June where she talks about Emily as she's being walked into the detention facility or whatever it is. She says she leaves nothing behind, which when she said that, all I could think about was, you know, in a few episodes from now, after she's gotten together with Nick and they're in the kitchen and they have what I call their Mm non-breakup, you know, one of the things, (laughs) one of the things she says is somebody will remember me. Yeah. Right. So she's, it's worth it to her to not be forgotten. Having love is worth it. Having him know her name is worth it. So I thought it was relevant. That was, you know, a voiceover that's on her mind is at that point already was being forgotten, leaving nothing behind in Gilead. You know, you're not even a memory to anybody. Mm-hmm. So that like triggered a right. thought in my brain is, oh, that's interesting. And, and I given think that's that, a you huge know, comment to literally be telling Nick, it's worth it to die. Like my life is worth this relationship we're having. That's <laughs> mm-hmm. kind of big deal. At least you'll remember me. At least somebody will mm-hmm. care when I'm gone. Yeah. Right. The whole thing comes back with Eden, right? Because the the, the clothes is all she left. Mm. That's right. Yeah. And they say, yeah, she's there's nothing left of her and um, no one will remember. Oh, that's so sad. So sad. Yeah. Even to have parents, uh, like, I mean. Parents they, are awful. Yeah. Did they say uh, something about the other daughter there as well? Sorry, I was just thinking. Yeah. Like, they have another daughter as well, don't they? Yeah. Even parents? Yeah. Yeah. What do they say about her? She's younger. Don't they say something like, it's she'll behave or something? Like, I can't remember, honestly, but. Right. Um, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, they say, uh, she's an example to the younger daughter, and she should um, remind herself of this. Uh, so she behaves something like that. I can't imagine having such horrible parents that you would put Gilead above caring for your child, your children. Just the kind of people in this place. My Where do they live even? Do they live like in a farm somewhere and just like chilling? That was my impression, but you don't I, see a whole lot of that. Yeah, I it sounded like they ran away time. to like their, their farm or I think that's what, that's always what I believed was, yeah, they had like a farm or somewhere out in the country. How heartbreaking is that for Eden? Man, all she wanted to be was loved and her parents don't even love her, but hey, at least Isaac? Isaac, yeah. yeah. Isaac did, yeah. Anyway, Eden. Um, I really love the parallel between June telling Janine you can't bite people. Yeah. And then fast forward to the season four finale when she's really excited about finally biting Fred. I'm not even sure <laughs> what part of his face she bites off, but um, I just really love thinking about her saying, you can't bite people. Oh, yeah, then know. in the voiceover and the season four finale, she's like, don't bite, don't bite, don't bite. <laughs> and then she bites, <laughs> then she bites him. <laughs> <laughs> so it definitely brings us back to this episode. Yeah. yeah. And Emily holds holds them steady so she can bite. I just, I love the, 
I also really liked in that scene, in that same scene, she's talking about, you know, obviously the way she's reacting to Janine talking about, oh, he really loves me and he's going to run away with me. What does Nick say to her at like the end of season two? You know, <laughs> we should, we should run away together with the baby. And exactly. It's just funny how, I mean, Janine was obviously like Putnam was never going to do that because he was playing her. So it's just very striking that she hears Janine saying it and she can hear it sounds crazy, but then Nick says it to her and we know he means it. Right. But think about if June had told another handmaid, like, oh, the driver, you know, it's our baby right. and he loves me and we're going to run away. That other handmaid would have been like, that she was are, you, crazy. are you, you're the batshit crazy one, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> which June isn't, and we know that, but it was just striking the way that, you know, she reacted. And I'm like, mm, girl, you're going to bolt, like, you're going to have all this going on for you and just just give it a little bit of time you're gonna have somebody telling you the same stuff and you're gonna but she never talks to anyone about nick that i would like that to change in season five um but you're right because back then they would have thought she was crazy yeah but i would like to hear her talk to someone about nick in season five there was actually another parallel in this in the scene with june and janine to what nick said in uh in season two uh about becoming a real family mm-hmm. like Janine said we're gonna be a real family and That's then fair. Nick says that to her in season two so it's a it's sort of like a double parallel here yeah. even in the dialogue I think about us the three of us what we could be yeah that is a good parallel I hate Putnam in future episodes though so yeah um, yeah about Putnam um Janine says uh they are in love blah blah and we know later when she jumps from the bridge, she says that she's doing with him things that Mrs. Putnam does not do. Uh-huh. So I was sitting there thinking like, do they still have sex? Because Fred and Serena obviously don't. Right. <laughs> and I thought it, it's like forbidden between unfruitful That doesn't make yeah, any couples. sense to me. If you want to have babies, why wouldn't you just also be having sex remember yeah. They, yeah, they, right? they try they try for two years and if they can't have yeah. a baby then they would get assigned a handmaid and sex should be for procreation so then i guess it's you cannot procreate you can't have sex yeah i thought it wasn't allowed for married couples to have sex if they yeah. can't procreate yeah i think that's true it's stupid but i think it's true i was just gonna say do we ever find out why they chopped his arm off why his arm yeah that's, oh, that's a good point. Huh. Is it somewhere <laughs> in the Bible? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking it must be in their law somewhere, but I don't know if we ever saw or heard why it was that. It, isn't it Mrs. Putman, the one that, that yeah. like, talks, and that's why he has his hand cut off? She yeah, told on him. Yeah, she, yeah, she <laughs> told on him. That, that couldn't, I was going to say it in Spanish. I'm like, I can't say that in Spanish. Um, that's exactly what I, what I meant. And it had to be, it had to do something with Janine. I just can't pinpoint what it was because it was right after the bridge scene, right? Well, yeah. I think a lot comes out on the bridge. She yeah, says just stuff that incriminates suck- him. Didn't she say like, she was like, suck his dick and all that stuff? I mean, she yeah, I think, yeah. That, yeah. I think she yeah. did, yeah. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know why that equates to losing your arm. Yeah, I don't either. You should lose his dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can't do that because yeah, then yeah, he can't have that baby. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Mm arm it is then and that goes back to you know at the end of the spoiler free we were talking about the hospital is only used for mutilating women it's only used for to dole out punishments as well right i was thinking i couldn't say it but like they you know at the end of episode 10 they take him they cut off his arm right mm-hmm. you know at the end of at the end of season two they take serena they cut off her finger uh-huh. so mm-hmm. they would have used it where they plucked out janine's eye so I think the healthcare system does only exist to mutilate, to punish, or to try and save pregnancy Maybe. like they do with June in the middle of season two. There's no other purpose to give anybody any sort of health care. You know, everybody's expendable. They just, if a Martha dies, well, we've got another one. We'll just pull her from wherever. You know, here's a new one. I have something for the moment Nick brings her to the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he says in the car the about the to- torture she has to tell them everything so they won't do 
anything to her. And he says the same thing in season four. And the yeah. same thing is uh, he apologizes for not being able to help and he feels responsible. It's the same in season four with episode three. Yeah. And then the same thing, um, him trying to dismiss the bombing so he could keep her safe. And the same thing happens here where, uh, where he tries to get them to not interrogate her. Unsuccessfully. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot, a lot of callbacks. It's a common theme. And I can only imagine how much Nick hates himself in all of these. Oh, yeah. Like, he wants to help. And even as a commander, he doesn't have enough power to help the way that he wants to. But yeah, those are good parallels constantly. And you see it in his face. He's so I know. hurting and so oh, horrible. When he says, like, please let me help you in the season four, that crushes me. Because he knows very well that she's just going to be her stubborn rebel self and not yeah. let him help her. But it's hurt. it hurts him. And the way his eyes well up in the, um, you have to make the bombing and he's like trying to <laughs> deflect and dismiss awkward, it and then like flailing yeah <laughs> yeah and then and then you see his eyes well up and he's about to cry but he can't and, <laughs> oh. god somebody said at some point it looks like he's gonna vomit like he's one step away from yeah vomiting there for and sure totally true he goes through a lot um the the biggest like glaring parallel is in the end of the episode when Serena's screaming at her on the floor. Do you understand me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm, the big one. Yeah. And it's insane, like we talked about before, because she's literally let's she may have been pregnant and she just had a cattle prodded out of her. So no matter what happened here, she has no fault in it, right? And yet Serena's treating her like she maliciously, intentionally miscarried this baby right so it's delightful in season four when she turns mm -hmm. the tables and she's and and they both delivered it really well but but lizzie moss's um like the spit like coming out of her mouth and the, the way she says fraction the monologue is that what cruel like she was very i mean she deserves it but cruel. what the words that she says you know like do you know why god made you pre pregnant you know, and she delivers that line that's really cruel. But I mean, again, she deserves it. She took it a step above from what Serena, Serena just threw her on the floor and said, well, things can get a lot worse for you. June just killed it. Right. <laughs> she did. She didn't she hold back at she all. She her baby dies. It's an intense scene and it's such a great callback though. You immediately, I remembered back to this scene and I don't always remember everything that happened, but they're both very memorable. I have another yeah. reference. Moira uh, says maybe there were never any terrorists and we later get to know that this was true there were mm -hmm. never any terrorists it was all sons of Jacob because they can lie to she knew you. yeah yeah in the in the bombing scene I mean Moira is is usually you know she was fired up when she was talking to June in, in the apartment when you know they're talking about the money and the banks but in the protest you kind of see Mora when she's huddled in the corner with June she's really really scared and I think yeah. that's the moment when she realized as a woman as an African-American woman and as a lesbian that she had a lot to lose and you see it in her face I mean it's a subtle moment but it, the detail is there and I caught into it the first time and when I did the rewatch as well that scene also <clears throat> reminded me of Janine and June in Chicago, like hiding in a restaurant um, in mm, season four. Yeah, the cinematography was similar to me. Was the same coffee shop that they uh, they visited in the first flashback? You know what? I bet it was, and I didn't notice. <laughs> I that, thought about it, but I bet it was. I uh, no, I thought about I it. it. I think it looks different. Yeah, because uh, where the uh, the people, the other people sat then. There was just a um... bar versus tables. Yeah, yeah there were no the... tables on the on the side. Mm -hmm. I think the one that was bombed had a, a more of a glass front. So yeah, that's when true, the bomb yeah. went off, it was much more 
dramatic because you had all the glass shattering and breaking. Yeah, but you get reminded of that. I, I thought about it too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's always Luke saying, you know, what's wrong with me saying I'll take care of my wife, right? And we, we yeah. already don't like how that sounds. They don't either. But then he doesn't, you know? Ultimately, yeah. he doesn't take care of his wife or his daughter. It's upsetting to me how long they waited to get out of there, right? And They're I don't complacent know if- to do yeah. anything at all. Right. So if you're going to be the kind of man that's going to say, um, it's my responsibility to take care of my wife, like take care of your wife then, right? Um, and your daughter more than that. I, you know, I have kids and I might make a bad decision for myself by not getting out of there, but protecting your mixed race child female child in this situation should have been like the very top of the list that you know in his head and he doesn't ever do anything and again it's not malicious but he really failed as a husband and a father in not yeah. getting him out of there at that point june i mean at that point after she loses her money and her job she literally has to depend on luke to leave because right. she can't leave on her own. She has no money. So, you know, she's, she, even if she didn't want to wait, she had to wait for him to make the decision to actually leave. Right. And then, like, fast forward to when they're getting stuffed in the trunk, trying to leave, it's too late. But I he think he says something like, you know, it's all going to be okay. Or, and they're literally being stuffed into a trunk at the moment. And I'm just, uh, you know, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> okay so I have a question so I went to the Writers Guild library in Los Angeles where you can you go and you can read the scripts so mm-hmm. we know in the script they were supposed to kiss for the first time in episode three mm-hmm. yeah how do you guys think episode five would have been different had they already kissed and had that connection because I think it would have been like the whole with Serena forcing them to you know have sex yeah that would not have been the same level of awkward or terrible yeah. Yeah. because yeah. they'd yeah. already had I'm already doing this. Yeah. yeah. So I think that was absolutely the right choice um, because then episode five was so much, which is better, you know, with attention, the payoff. <laughs> yeah. The payoff at the end. Yeah. When they finally do kiss at the end of that episode, whew, boy, oh my like, God. it's crazy that their first kiss is like naked. Who, who does that? Yeah, like right before they they have sex. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Yeah, kind of. but like that is a huge part of the magic of that scene in season in episode five for me is the build up, like knowing that this has been like inevitable for a while now, right? The the tension between them and it's just like kind of like beautiful when it comes when it finally happens and it's so good and so organic. It seems you know like the way that it's choreographed just beautiful and so i'm very glad that they changed the ice scene to just be like full of tension overwhelming with tension a little bit of touch if they kissed in this episode i think that uh, it would have been a really great kissing scene but at the same time i think it was or it would have been unnecessary because we got so many or we've gotten so many really really great kisses from them after that Mm-hmm. And uh, and they definitely needed to up up the tension a little yeah. bit more before anything ha- more happened between them. Yeah. So I understand why they made this choice, and uh, at the same time, I think it would have been a little like unnecessary. It wasn't needed at this point. Uh-huh. Yeah, I agree. But I would love to see all these cutscenes someday, which I know I never probably will. But yeah, I'm putting, you, I'm putting the formal request out there. If you filmed <laughs> it that way, um, we would love to see it. Just <laughs> yes, <laughs> help with our research for the podcast. If you happen to do a take where they kissed, but you ended up cutting it, that's we cool. I get it. it. We support it, but can, but also, can we see it? Like or like a full body <laughs> shot where exactly you where their hands are. <laughs> it's for science. <laughs> One scene that I would really like to see that is not relevant here is when she sees Hannah at the summer house and then like Hannah leaves and she's on the snow and her knee on her knees and he like runs to her and apparently drops to his knees to hold her. I would like to see the the wide 
Yeah, I've never understood exactly how they're standing because he had to have dropped to his knees, but then also because he gets up. Yeah, 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 he drops. I want to see him running over there too. I want to see all of that. I have watched this exact scene yesterday (laughs) 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 because because uh, uh, I don't know. I have seen something before about him holding her uh, so she doesn't run out outside after Mm -hmm. Hannah. And he says, uh, he whispers to her, stay inside, stay inside, stay inside. And she just runs off. Oh, really? Uh, and yeah. And she she talks to Hannah and then she uh, Hannah's gone and she stops and you see his feet uh, in the yeah. back and slowly coming up. And before you notice that he's there with her and hugging her, you hear his, um, his breath. And really? so, you know, he's there. Yeah, you see... That the, the feet are leaving the, the frame. I remember and then you him. hear him, then you hear him breathing, and then his arms are there. So that was it was kind of nicely done, but yeah, I would love to see the whole thing too, because he has to drop. Maybe that's why he um you hear the breathing, because he had to get down. Dropping, yeah. Yeah. Also, can I say this is the stuff we pick up on? We we have we get so little, like <laughs> we have to pick up on we can hear him breathing. <laughs> Just out of yeah. frame, and then he's there. <laughs> well, I gotta go back and watch now because I didn't notice the press. So, <laughs> is that Whoever Gilead got romance? That shot. It's Gilead romance, exactly. You gotta like really like blow up every little moment. This is, there, is a there... not a romantic story, guys. Remember, come on. <laughs> 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 We're not supposed to like it. That's yeah. right. No. <laughs> it's, it's so funny that people say that when it's literally the point of the story. I'm not. I mean. It's not the whole point of the story, but the fact that June's like love is what there is to live for, you know. In she the book, says it. In the show, it's very important to her. It keeps her alive. It's no, it's yeah. not the primary point. I don't mean that, but it's such a huge component that to dismiss it entirely, it, I don't understand how that works. It's love and connection to other human beings. So it's not right. just the romance between them, which is obviously a big part. But you know, the episode in season two where you know Janine's baby is just terrible she's not being yeah. loved by her mother love in all different forms that's what we live for human connection you know the connection right. with the other handmaids it is a por- an important part of the story it's very important and that is the point of it is humans need love and connection to mm-hmm. thrive and to exist or you know otherwise why am I watching this show just to watch people get tortured and raped yeah like, right. no she says it in each season at least once it's this big moment where she says, uh, you can't live without love. The first time was with Fred in his study, mm-hmm. where she said, yeah, love is the one thing you need. And in season two, she tells Luke that she found love, kind of, that yeah, Polly true. was made out of love. In right. season three, she um, she says, like, uh, in the scene where after Nick visits her, she sits uh, on, at the table and says, um, if she never can have something like this, love, she has to die, Mm -hmm. something like that. That's so interesting. And yeah, so I don't know how how people can say the love story is not a part of this story. It is a big part. She says it. She outright says it. Yeah. They also think that maybe if it's a romantic story, which it's not, um, you know, then it's the man that has to save the woman, and this is a wo- woman empowered uh-huh. show. So they just simply think, oh well, you know, Nick is going to save her. Nick has n- no. Nick is not saving her. Nick is helping her to survive. You know, Nick is not yeah. overbearing, telling her what she has to do to stay. Like, look, uh, you know, I think you should do this, but he knows she's going to make her own decisions, and he's going to be there even when she fucks up. Like we've seen that since since the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but and. I also like that that ice touch is their first of of many touches like he's such a tactile person that he will you know they're crossing a room at the same time and they reach out to touch fingers and you know after the first sex scene he was like risking his life to touch her fingers I I love that about their relationship and then he does it in Washington mm. DC, like in front of a room full of that handmaids. That they that insane. He's taking With a picture. The camera, of <laughs> the camera is pointed to them. <laughs> right in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? It's fancy seeing you here in a place like this or something. Nice like girl like you nice in a place like this. Oh, nice girl. Yeah. Girl in a place like this. I think that's from the book in like a different part of the book, maybe. Yeah. Also, like Serena can fully hear that, but she doesn't react. 
Oh, the touches, that's all. Yeah, I have right. one thing left. Um, it's when their eyes are there and interrogating June, she's like fully scared of the pain and she doesn't want to get hung on the wall. She has, she's, she's scared to die, right? Right. And fast forward to season three, where she's borderline suicidal. She is. She's, she's suicide doing mission. everything to get killed. Like, yeah. And in yeah. season four, she's like outright um, begging Lydia to kill her. So yes. Yes. that's quite a ride, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> she was really, so... she, she had hope in the beginning. And in season three, it declines so much. It's terrifying. Yeah, she's such a different person if you look at her from these scenes to the end of season four. But the amazing thing is that Nick still is madly in love with her and vice versa. Like that never changes, even though she changes so much, you know? Yeah. Which is why we're here doing this podcast. Yeah, episode three was the turning point again. Yeah. She comes back again and she gets hope again. And it's like magic. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. He's changed too at the same time. Yeah, he has, yeah. yeah. With her. So they totally. both evolved from what they were back in season one. Right. Well, and he says well, that he too said, in the study with Lawrence, said, yeah. right? Yeah. He says that. She changed me. She changed you. June did that. I wonder how much he's changed because to me, it seems like maybe he's gotten a little more overt in the way he helps her. You know, he's gotten less afraid. But overall, I would say he's pretty much been very consistent in the way, but maybe. He does more like he looks, he's looking more for Hannah. He's being more overt about taking it. Taking bigger risks for her. Like, yeah, maybe oh, yeah. he's also <laughs> kind of lost yeah. that, um, this, the self-preservation. I think Max has, there's some quotes from Max about that, where he talks about June makes him lose his ability to do things for his own self-preservation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think he said that even about the bridge scene in episode three in some interview. They're like, um, do you think that was a good idea? And he's like, well, love makes you make bad decisions sometimes but it's yeah. worth it right that scene is awesome i think he started you know obviously taking more risks because he's obviously started to care for her but then once she got pregnant it all changed yeah. but i think now that he's not just a driver you know people always say well he's only helping june well yeah that's that's what you do you don't like go full in commando and try to take the regimen just yourself you start taking risks when you see other people taking risks and when you have something that you care about and you take risks for the people that you love so he fell in love with June so he obviously focused on June yet he tried not to harm anybody in the process he tried to save Eden even though he was kind of dry with her for obvious reasons he tried to do it at the end, you know, Max Mangala said in an interview, you know, he tries to do the right choice, even though sometimes, you know, he makes mistakes. Again, the characters are flawed. They're not supposed to be perfect. But I think once he got to be a commander and we saw it in season four, we didn't see a lot of it, but I think that behind the lines, he has more power and more leeway. So I think he's doing more, not just for June. I mean, we're focused on June because it's her story and it's seen from her perspective. But I, I think he's doing more stuff and I hope to see it in season five towards just trying to hurt Gilead. And I think that's what he means when he says she changed me. You know, yeah, he's totally. more focused. He didn't have to do the Hannah thing. He said it. I, I didn't think I was going to see you again. He did it because he knows June. At some point he was, I don't know if he was going to mail that out. I really don't know what he was going to do. <laughs> but he, when he says it, you know, he says, I, as soon as you got to Canada, which that tells me he was not going to look for her. He was give, giving her the chance to be happy with Luke, whatever that means. But, you know, I never thought I had the chance to give it to you. So obviously when he got the call, he was going to run to see her because he wanted to see her. He was just respecting her space, which that's yeah. also talks about his character and who he is. Another but I think he that I would kill to see. Yeah. <laughs> we see that he starts to do things for I mean for the overall good before June comes into his life with the thing that he um, accepts being an eye to get rid of the commanders right. step by step and, and so, first the commander that created the handmaids yeah right mm-hmm. so he it's did that priority. before he met June so I yep. think he he was always trying to I mean yeah before that he was trying to survive just 
that and doesn't uh, didn't do anything else, I guess. But after that point, I guess he always tried to do something to help to to at least do something good for the other people. Yeah, yeah, that was a note in the script I remember very well from episode eight when they have the flashback to the first Alfred dying. There's a line and we can go into this more in episode eight. Um, but it says her dying opened his eyes to a rot in Gilead under the surface he yeah. hadn't seen before. So, you know, I think up to that point, he was just like head down surviving. Yeah. But slowly, you know, that opened his eyes. He made the change to, he took out the commander that came up with the handmaids and then, you know, he fell in love with June and he starts taking risks more and more to not help, not only her, but in the process, I'd love for them to show this, that he's, you know, actually helping do bigger overall good. Right. Yeah. For the resistance. I would also like to see that, but I believe it to be true. I do too. So for this particular episode, we want to just talk a little bit about the crew the writers on this one are John Herrera, Nina Fiore, and Lynn Renee Maxi. It's directed by Reed Morano, and the director of photography is Colin Watkinson. The director of music, as always, is Adam Taylor, and we actually had a note to say about him. So let me introduce my friend Wanda, who you've met on previous episodes. Wanda was pointing out the other day that we occasionally get things wrong in our ramblings and it would be cooler if we didn't. (laughs) So tell us about our new segment that we're officially starting next week, Wanda. Okay, so it is called After the Fact, and this is where we fact check um, what the panel says. Uh, Most of the time, the panel gets things right, but sometimes those little pesky things called facts (laughs) <laughs> creep, creep in and we need to make sure we always have our facts right because we want our listeners to be well informed so on the season one episode two podcast our fearless leader kate <laughs> gave a shout out to adam taylor now uh, adam is receiving of all the accolades that he can get but we want to make sure we give credit where credit is due So I have it from a reliable source as to how the music choices are made on The Handmaid's Tale. Adam is responsible for the writing of the score for The Handmaid's Tale. That's all the beautiful music that you hear in the background, you know, like the scene on the on the bridge. The Nick and June song. Yeah, the Nick and June song. Yeah, which I'm sure Oz Blaine's here in their sleep. I know I do. (laughs) And then um, one of my favorites is the Martha theme. You know, the theme oh, where yeah. June is, uh, is escaping and the Marthas are getting her out. I love that. I don't know why that I do. That is beautiful. But I, I do love that. So um, that's what he's responsible for. Now, the other music choices like um, Leslie Gore's uh, You Don't Own Me and Forget About Me um, by Simple Minds. Mm-hmm. Those choices are the choices of directors and Bruce Miller. And I know for a fact that Bruce Miller made the choice to use that song um, in the last episode of the season when, when our friend is, when she gets on the, yeah, he made that choice. Yeah. I just wanted to revise my shout out then. And I appreciate the correction, but um, Reed Morano, that song was the most perfect choice. Right. It was, she's, um, and she's brilliant too. And then there are also sometimes that the music supervisor uh, submits multiple tracks for as ideas. And those are approved by Bruce or Lizzie. So like you said, shout out to uh, Reed Morano. We also need to give her credit for bringing um, Adam aboard. She She did. Yep. She had collaborated with him uh, previously and thought that he would be perfect to create Gilead Sound. So um, what she did was she created a playlist of all his cattle, his whole catalog, and she wouldn't give up. She kept bothering everybody until he was allowed to come on board. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, that's fantastic. And what a lasting effect on the show then she had. Right. 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 I mean, her presence is ever going to be with this show forever. So yeah. And he's Um, phenomenal. So. All right. Well, thank you for that taste. Did you have any other corrections? No, no. Today. 
Okay. No. So you're going to have a whole list of them next week, right? Catching up yes, on four have, episodes. Right. We have a few th- that we have to, um, I think we, we're going to go back to episode, episode two, and then episode three, we'll do that, those two together. Yeah, and you haven't even heard four yet, so could no, be a long yet. one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. We love this. We're very excited about this new segment. It's, it, Thank it's you. nice to be correct. Yeah, uh, yeah, we have to, right? <laughs> Thank you. All right. See ya. All right. Bye bye. Okay. I think that's a wrap for our deep dive into season one, episode three. Join us next week. On Monday, we'll release the spoiler free episode discussing and analyzing season one, episode four. And then on Wednesday, the deep dive will follow, which will be full of spoilers for longtime fans. Uh, thanks again for joining us with Above the Garage. You know, I think about us, the three of us, what we could be. I think about it all the time. Please, it's terrible. No, it's not. I know Jim. She's my friend. I care about her. How's your day going? You look pretty. Thanks. I wore it just for you. Her father's a driver named Nick. He helped me to survive. Yes, you can, because I can't lose you. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. What about you? Your girlfriend is a badass. 